Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, so today, I would like to um, present, give an overview of what, it, what it's like to create an application, like a full stack application, the different layers of an application using EdgeX. And for this example, we used an automotive, automotive, automotive IoT app, and we used um, Raspberry Pi. So we, um, uh, Malini and I, we, uh, we created an, um, a sample automotive app last year, all in Python, on, uh, on a Raspberry Pi, to see what it was like to create an edge-based an edge application. And then we started working on EdgeX. EdgeX is an um, edge computing framework, and we decided that um, and I decided I would re recreate this application with EdgeX to kind of show the process, show what it's like as a developer to create, to recreate this application. So today we'll talk about what's, um, what it's like to create an edge-based ac application, so your architecture. Then uh, we'll talk about the Python sample app that we created last year. Um, then I'll give you a quick intro to EdgeX Foundry. We don't want to go too deep into the mechanics and to the internals of EdgeX Foundry because I really want this to be a user from a user's perspective. And then we'll go deep into the full stack app, the different levels, the different layers, and, um, and what, it, what it was like to use a Raspberry Pi. And then I'll talk about the future work. So this is um, from, the, um, uh, from the project's website. Edge has been historically kind of segmented, a lot of uh, proprietary work, a lot of people working on their side or in their company. So the nomenclature and the, the um, the terminology has kind of been non-standardized so far. So when we talk about edge, we really talk about everything that's in the in this box. So that, that could mean that could mean a lot of things. That could mean some people think of their of edge as devices. Some people think of it as um, bigger servers that are closer to their data center. So um, as as an effort. Like, in order to make this a little more standardized, there, this project was created. It's called the Edge Computing Glossary, Open Glossary of Edge Computing. It's on GitHub. It's uh, under LF Edge, so it's uh, supported by the Linux Foundation. And it's really cool. You can open a PR. You can discuss. You can, they, have, they have weekly meetings where you can kind of discuss the different terms and kind of argue the, um, the definition of, it, uh, of different terms. Um, so. Yeah, so the, the automotive app that we created, it was fairly simple. We had um, a Raspberry Pi. We wrote um, an application on Python in Python that would read from a, a GPS, just read like zero coordinates, and read from an OBD sensor. The OBD sensor is the little uh, dongle that you plug into your car to get all kinds of uh, metrics from your car. You can get a lot of data. You can get um, your speed. You can get the engine like RPM, you can get your fuel level, you can get all sorts of stuff. So we gather all that data into the Raspberry Pi. And of course, the premise of edge computing is you have a lot of data, you don't want to ship all the data up to the cloud, right? That's, that's, you're using a lot of bandwidth. So the idea is that you, you can aggregate all the data in your edge gateway, closer to the data generation, filter it out, and then only, only send the necessary event up to the cloud. That way you lose, use less bandwidth and less data. Um, so yeah, so we have three layers here, devices, edge, cloud endpoints. Um, the, the cool part about this proof of concept is that we could serve three different endpoints through one edge gateway, right? Um, so you could have three different applications, three different use cases. So yeah, so now let's go into edgex. Um, it's supposed to be hardware OS agnostic, any kind of OS. I run it on my Mac, on my um, natively on my Mac OS. Um, obviously, I run it on a Raspberry Pi. You can run it on x86. Dell sells those big um, edge gateways that you can obviously run it on. Um, plug and play, so it's a bunch of microservices. You can replace and um, replace with anything that you, any services that you would have built internally, maybe, your own. Um, Rules engine, your own filtering system, your own devices, obviously. Um, you can run them as containers. We have some Docker files you can use. Uh, you can run them as Snap. Snap doesn't have the right, uh, we haven't built a Snap for um, ARM64 yet, so you can't use it. You're not, you're not able to use it on Raspberry Pi. 
and you can also run the Go binaries. But in the case of the Raspberry Pi, we don't have a lot. I mean, it takes a long time to build on Raspberry Pi, so not recommended. Um, it's under the LF Edge um, recently, recently uh, announced, and it's Apache 2.0. Um, so this is the image that everyone uses to kind of describe the project. The core services, I won't go to too many details, but this is um, where, your data, where your data lives. Uh, they send the commands. They have the, they know the metadata about all your different devices. And then southbound, south of this. So when we talk about south, um, southbound, we talk about devices. We talk about anything that's uh, closer to data generation. So you can create your own device services. There's an SDK called a device SDK. There's one in Go and one in C. And there's a lot of examples you can use for any kind of protocol that you think of. There's BLE, there's MQTT, um, things like that. And there's a lot of examples you can look at to, um, to kind of get started. And on the other side, um, upstream, uh, not upstream, I'm sorry, northbound, is when you go to the cloud. And we have uh, export services, and we, there's a new SDK that's about to come out in, during the next release that will help everyone um, build a pipeline up to the cloud. All right, so um, a full stack app. So like I said, three different layers. The edge being in the middle, you, um, that's where your gateways are. That's where EdgeX will live. Um, in the southbound, the device layer, all your devices. Um, so like I said, you have to build your own device services with the device SDK. That device service will live on the edge with EdgeX. And that's where um, all the data is going to come, in, come into play. And northbound is the cloud. So um, there's a new SDK that we're coming out with called um, App Function SDK. And that lets you call a function, like build a, f like a function pipeline that will, be in, like, that will be called on every single event that's being created by, um, uh, for the devices. So let's start with the device layer. Um, like I said, device SDK, you have, there's a, a series of uh, functions that you, have to, that you have to implement. You don't have to use all of them, but you have to implement them in your, in your Go file or C file. Um, so any data, any data that you want to extract from your devices has to, be, has to come from a command. So you have to define your command. You have to define, for example, for the GPS, we had to define um, um, like a GPS command that would pull one, one coordinate. And then you can obviously uh, schedule it to come in every second, every millisecond, every 10 second, whenever you want, um, depending on the type of uh, granularity that you want. And so you define your command, and you define your resources, your data type. So in our case, we, we had a bunch of data that was coming from one single device. We had longitude, latitude, speed, and uh, time. So we didn't want to create four different devices for those four different data types because they came from the same device. So what we did is I defined the resource to be a string, and every time I create, I find a new um, uh, geolocation, I create a JSON struct that, or create a JSON object that contains all those different data, uh, data points. And that's passed as a value. But let's say you had a thermometer and you want to um, query the, temp the temperature, then your data type would probably be um, a long or like a, um, a float, rather, and that would just contain the, the temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, and then once that data is being extracted and sent, it's sent into EdgeX, it's saved into um, a, a MongoDB or Redis database, whether, whether, like which, whichever one you decide to go with, and you can decide to persist it or not, and then you can, obviously you can decide to send it to the cloud or not. All right. So this is the, the GPS dongle that we have. It's, um, we picked, it up, picked this up on Amazon for, like, I think, $30. Uh, we liked it because it was USB-C. Uh, sorry, it was USB. So we could just plug it in directly into the, into the Raspberry Pi. Very easy. So once you plug it in, it actually dumps the data. It's a, uh, a push device as opposed to a pull device. So um, you, open, you just open the dev slash USB 1 or USB 0, and it will just dump all the, all the different lines. And then you have to look for the specific line that you want. You have to parse it, and you have to convert the, the um, uh, coordinates into minute degrees. Um, yeah, so like I said, we have four different data types. We have latitude, longitude, speed, and time. 
time is actually very useful because often if you're driving around and you have a Raspberry Pi in your car, you're not going to have uh, connectivity. And then in the Raspberry Pi is not able to keep track of time without connectivity. So time is great because now you have the time from the, from the GPS device. Uh, and we included a mock uh, data file to, um, to help people get started because no one wants to buy a $30 GPS device if you're not sure what you're going to do with it. So um, there's a mock data file that replicates exactly what the GPS device would output, which is really useful for development too. So if you want to get started with EdgeX and create some kind of location-based application, we get a um, data file for you. And yeah, so like I said, the, um, the device, as soon as you plug it in, it just starts dumping data. So what we do is that as soon as the device service is started, there's a callback that's called add device. And what we do in this callback is I just start a Go routine. I implemented this in Go, by the way. Uh, a Go routine that would just read all those, um, all those lines. And as soon as I see a line that, that I'm interested in, I, I pull it, convert all the, data, all the data, and save it in a global struct. And then once we have the um, um, handle read, like once I um, send a read command, the, oops, sorry, the, um, um, the device service will get that global struct and, and send that data to the cloud. No, uh, sorry, to uh, core data. So let's see the um, uh, app function SDK. So that's um, the northbound part. It lets you, it's new, it, it's, it's still in beta. It's uh, coming out with the next, um, the next um, release in November, October. So what it does is that it, there's a bunch of built-in functions you can use, um, like some JSON formatting things. You can co convert JSON to XML. Um, and obviously, you can create your own functions, which is where it gets interesting, because um, that's where you can start filtering your data. You can do some, um, some interesting analytics to your data. For example, us, one of the use cases we thought about is that we want to know when, we might want to know when you're speeding, for example. So if we know your, um, your speed limit, if we can just like, set a threshold of 65, as soon as we see um, a speed above 65, we can create an event, see how long you were above 60 miles an hour for, and then send your, your speed, the time, and then the, maybe the location, like the start and end location of your speeding. Um, that way you're not sending any, every single event, every single um, um, location event, because those location events, the way I set it up right now, like, I think read every second, so it's obviously way too much data. And like I said, those functions are called on every event that you, uh, that you create, which is very useful. And you can create however as many functions as you want in the pipeline. Um, yeah, so um, we, uh, again, the next release is coming out, the Fuji is coming out late October, early uh, no November. We're working on um, creating an export function for all the, the most popular, the very popular um, uh, cloud provider. I think right now we're working on AWS, Azure, and um, Alibaba. So those three cloud providers have a, um, an IoT, like an IoT um, product, and it's usually an MQTT endpoint that you can send MQTT data directly to. So we're working, in, we're working to, um, towards creating like an out-of-the-box MQTT export. So you just have to enter your credentials and it would send it to your cloud. All right, so now the interesting part, um, the gateway, the Raspberry Pi. So it turns out it wasn't that easy to, um, to install on the Raspberry Pi, mostly because so far the community has been working with uh, x86 mostly. So there hasn't been that much support for ARM, although we do, have, we do build our, uh, our code, our microservices for ARM64. Um, so most people, when they have a Raspberry Pi, they'll install Raspbian on it, super popular. However, it's only 32-bit, and EdgeX only works with 64-bit at the moment because especially if you use the Mongo version, because Mongo requires a 64-bit um, architecture. So, yeah, so 64-bit ARM, uh, one gigabyte of RAM, you will want to create SWAT because um, if you build, at least my GPS uh, service, if you build it, you will run out of memory. Uh, it has Ethernet, super easy, just plug it in. Um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, low energy. Uh, that was nice when we used the OBD sensor, because the OBD sensor we bought was Bluetooth. 
uh, SD card reader. I use that to flash the, um, the operating system, Ubuntu 64, and four USB ports. So the um, requirements. So like I said, uh, Ubuntu Server, ARM64, that's so far the best, uh, the most popular one when trying to run on Raspberry Pi. Um, make sure you use a 64 one. I used a 30, 32 one. It wasn't really clear which one it was, and it did not work. Uh, you'll need Go 1.12. 1.11 should work too. You can install it as a snap. You can install it pretty easily. Um, same thing for Docker. You can uh, install it with apt get. So that's easy. However, Docker Compose, so like I said, you, you don't want to use a Docker the Docker way because we don't have a snap for uh, ARM64 yet, and it will take you hours to build, um, to build the microservices from scratch. So definitely use the Docker Compose. However, if you want to install it, you'll want to install it with pip, and you'll have to install libssl and this libffi before installing Docker Compose, and it will fail. That's, um, Took me a long time to solve that one too. Um, then we have an ARM64 compose file too that you want to download. Obviously, the uh, x86 images will not work. You'll want to create one to two gigabytes of swap. We had 16 gigs of uh, we had a 16 gig uh, SD card, so we just I just created two two gigabytes. Uh, you'll want to download and build the um, uh, device GPS device. So it's right now it's in incubation mode. So we have um, Ajax Foundry holding organization on GitHub where we're going to hold our, all the, the project that will eventually get merged into the main organization. Um, there's a PR pending. It will it should merge into the main organization in a couple of weeks. And then you'll want to create your own function pipeline to see like whatever you want to do with your data and obviously put in your own endpoints into it. And at this point, you should be ready to go. So I have a quick little demo of how it looks when you, um, um, when you, when you build and you run the, the GPS device. So this was running on a Raspberry Pi on my network. Uh, I was uh, SSH into my Raspberry Pi on my Mac, and then I read, I, I called it, um, there's an API call that you can call to see all the readings, so you'll see that in a second. So I'm just showing the um, running containers. I already call uh, Docker Compose up dash D ahead. Going into my uh, device GP GPS, building it. It's a pretty small device, so it's, uh, it's pretty slow build times. So at this point, Ajax is running. All the microservices were started previously with Docker Compose. And at this point, it's waiting, it's just waiting for a device to kind of sign up, sign on, and register itself, and send all the data into core data. So that's built. Then I'm going into command and starting the device service. It's a Go binary. So it's registering. And these are all events. I actually have here um, a little, um, log statement every time I send an event up. And I'm going to my browser, reloading, and this API call, let me pause this. You can call, the, you can just do a get request to this API call. It was event slash device slash the name of the device, device GPS, and then a number of events that you want. And it'll give you all the um, different events. And it might be a little small here, but like I said, the value, instead of having a single, um, a single value, I have a string containing the JSON, a JSON object. So this, I probably can't see very much, but it says longitude, latitude, time, and speed. And that's coming from the data file that we have in the repository, which makes it a lot, like, a lot easier to, um, to develop with. All right. So now, the last part, so the last layer that I had in that first slide was the cloud. Obviously, your user, if you want to have some kind of user-facing application, you'll have to create um, a, cl a cloud endpoint unless you want to use one of the, um, like one of the big cloud providers' um, IoT products. 
I just built an um, endpoint in Flask. It was pretty easy, Python and Flask. Uh, I would just um, have a, like a put request endpoint, and I would just push, I would just push the, um, uh, the event I was interested in at that time. Uh, and then I built a UI in Python and, and uh, no, sorry, in, in uh, JavaScript and React to kind of display. So wh whatever, whoever the um, user would be would kind of see this on the browser, and I would get the data from the endpoint, from the database in the cloud. But this is outside of Ajax Focus, so we're not, we don't support, um, we don't provide support for this. All right, so future work. So in terms of helping developers running on Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pis are super popular. People love them. They're not, definitely not very uh, cost effective. They're uh, ARM64, they don't, I mean, you probably don't want to use our, uh, Raspberry Pis in production, but they're great for hobbyists and for you know, hacking on a weekend. So um, we want to make the I want to make those files more readily available. I, I had to kind of dig around to find the, the ARM64 uh, Docker file. Um, there's a, a good amount of tutorials that are a little outdated um, on how to run on an RPI on a Raspberry Pi. So definitely want to update all the links and update all the information. And then we had a repository on GitHub on um, um, containing our previous uh, sample app. And I'll make sure I add this to um, all the components to that so everyone can, uh, can see it. And that way you can see side by side like a native Python app and an Edgex based um, application. And then relevant features that are coming into the next release, we have, um, App function SDK, that's the big one. They've been doing a great job on this. It's, it's looking really good. Um, and as part of that, we'll have the um, IoT, um, AWS, Azure, and Alibaba IoT um, export functions. So um, you can just enter your credential, and they'll export your data into uh, like an MQTT format. And we know there's a lot of different um, cloud providers out there. We don't have the resources to create one for everyone. So um, Feel free. Like we are looking for contributors. Like feel free to contribute. Contributions are more than welcome. And then the device GPS, which is uh, currently still in holding in incubator mode, uh, should be merged in the next couple of weeks, so people will be able to use that and use the, the mock data file that comes with it. Thank you. Two D. I'm sorry to the um, to the OBD. Okay, so there's two things. Originally, in the first um, in the first POC that we made, uh, there was Bluetooth. Yeah, so it's they have a bunch. They have some that are uh, USB two. The one that we purchased was Bluetooth. It's pretty good, uh, but then the GPS has a USB port. Um, yes. Uh, so right now we support MongoDB and Redis DB. So we have uh, Docker files, for, uh, Docker Compose files for both of those. However, if you want to support your own database, you'll have to you have to create your own uh, connection. Um, there's no SDK, but it's, it should be fairly easy to do. Yeah. Um, you can see how Mongo is implemented and how uh, Redis is implemented, I guess. Oh, that's a great question. Absolutely, yeah. It's after the license change, right? Yeah, it's, so it's after the license change. So, um, yeah, I know Red. I know people like will use Redis for that for that reason. Hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, so like I said, there's also Redis. Also Redis. I think beep, um, when uh, people started designing Ajax, it was kind of meant to run on a beefier edge machine. Although, I mean, I ran it on a Raspberry Pi, so it, obviously you can run it on a pretty small machine too. But like I said, like you should be able to implement your own uh, database connector as well. 
And obviously, you don't have to, so there is a, in the configuration file, there is a toggle that says uh, persist data or not. So if you don't want to save all your data on the edge, you really don't have to. So if, if, you're, uh, if you're concerned about um, storage, you should, you should be able to uh, just not persist your data. Did I answer your question? Um, it could be, it could be just for buffering. You could make it so it would just delete the data after you you make your analysis. Um, in the case of the um, the GPS data and all the location data and the speed, we really don't have to persist it at all. You can you can just read it as it come in in the app function SDK. You can look at every single event. If it's under 60 miles an hour, just dump it. If it's above 60 miles an hour, you record like you start a timer or something, and then you dump it and and if you do your analysis on the go, you, you might not have to save it at all. Did that answer your question? Yeah? Would your slides be available? Uh, they should, yeah. yeah. If you want to shoot me an email, my, uh, well, my email is on the first. Let me uh, show you my first slide. I'll be glad to send you the slide and also answer any of your questions. Question? No. All right, if, um, if I don't have any more questions, I think, I think that's it. Thank you.